and welcome back. Uh, here we are into chapter 7 of Revelation. Uh, let me read to you the first eight verses from that passage there in chapter 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of God's servants. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 40, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. And from the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. So back in chapter 6, we saw that the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, he was breaking open the, uh, the seals that were on the scroll. The six seals uh, that were on the scroll. And we saw that the scroll is God's purposes for human history which only the Lamb who was slain for the sins of the world can open. We reached the sixth seal in our last video, and now we are kind of taking a sidestep. In the beginning of chapter 7, John sees something else. Uh, after this, I saw, and that is the clue there, uh, that we're not continuing in the sequence of the seven seals, but that something else is going on. And this something else is going on at the same time as the first five seals were opened. We've got to try not to think sequentially in Revelation. Lots of things are happening um, at the same time. John uh, can only tell them us, about, us about them one at a time, and so he gives us sort of different angles on the same events, and this is, this is one of those angles. And here we see four angels that are holding back the four winds of the earth, which cause destruction. And the four winds are essentially akin to the four horsemen that we saw back in chapter 6, who cause disaster and destruction throughout the world uh, in our own time. The four angels are holding them back because God is concerned about his people. And John is seeing how God is about to protect his people. That's the church. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ and, uh, and you uh, believe that he got raised him from the dead, that's you. During the time of the, of the kind of dis disasters and evil that, uh, and the suffering that is going on around the world every day, God wants to protect his people. Wars and road traffic accidents. Tsunamis and murders, modern day slavery and awful plagues, all of that he wants to protect the people against. Well, what happens to God's people, the church, in the midst of that? Well, John shows us they're sealed. The four winds or the four horsemen are not allowed to do anything until God's church is sealed. Sealed with what? Well, sealed with the Holy Spirit. The way John is describing what he saw is suggestive of another sealing. Back in Exodus chapter 12, God told the Israelites to daub blood, the blood of a Passover lamb, over their doorposts, and they'd be physically protected against the angel of death. Here, the angels seal the foreheads of God's servants, an image that made sense in the time in which John was writing, because slaves would sometimes be sealed by their owners, uh, by their owners marking them on their foreheads. This doesn't mean that we're to look for marks on our foreheads as a confirmation that we're God's people. That's, beside, that's, not, that's not the point at all. Uh, it means that God is going to give us something that confirms we are his people. This is the Holy Spirit. Paul, writing in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, uses the language of sealing to talk about the Holy Spirit. He says, you were marked with him, in him, with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So we're peering into a kind of freeze frame shot of the world from God's point of view. Before all the chaos of the world, that long, this longing for the redemption of God can be let loose. God's people are sealed and therefore protected. But what kind of protection is this? Well, because we know from Revelation that some were martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ, and because we know from our own experience that God's people are not protected from physical danger, this has to be something else. Uppermost in John's mind is that this is the protection of the believer's faith and salvation from various sufferings and persecutions that are run in the mill in this world at the moment. The sufferings and persecutions will still happen, but our faith and salvation are protected and assured. In fact, so often what happens is that in responding in faith, to trials and sufferings and persecutions of whatever sort, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the seal, these very trials, these sufferings, these persecutions become the very instruments of God through which our faith is strengthened, 
Such is the way of God in the world. We are then told about just how many people are sealed. Here is God gathering his people from all over the earth, sealing them with the Holy Spirit so that their faith and salvation are secure. And the number is endless. Now, we aren't to take 144,000 or the 12,000 from each tribe as a literal number. Remember that John uses metaphor and imagery to get his points across and that numbers are important. They're symbolic. Here are the 12 tribes of Israel representing the totality of God's people. It's 12 times 12 equals 144. That's where the 144,000 comes from. So here is the total, the whole of God's people multiplied by all of God's people and then uh, given a great multiplier of the thousands, the three zeros on the end. Uh, any time that there is a multiplied by tens or hundreds or thousands, it, it sh it's to show that then the numbers are so big you can't count them. There are endless numbers of people. Not one person of God's people, the church, is missing. And that's the point. We get very confused and we get very exclusive when we start to take John's imagery and his metaphors as a literal interpretation. And we really need to not do that. We avoid doing that by understanding that John's purposes, uh, what John's purposes are. And also by reading the whole of the book of Revelation. In fact, we've paused to today halfway through. Uh, we'll see next time as we start verse 9 that the people of God, the church, is countless. As John, in this freeze frame, changes the angle to show us a different aspect of what's going on. To show us what these protected and sealed people of God are now doing. So join us next week. <laughs>